Hello, this video will walk through the measurements of six ciliary body and ciliary process parameters on transverse UVM images. In the transverse orientation, one can see the hyperechoic bright white sclera, and underneath that, the more hypoechoic or gray ciliary body. A row of ciliary processes can be seen extending from the ciliary body. Before measuring the parameters, we will first need to set the scale. To do this, use the straight line tool and trace a line over the C1 line from crosshair to crosshair. You can zoom in to make visualization easier. Once the line is drawn, hit Control M to measure the length of this line. Record this number as your reference number. In this case, it is 63.856. Next, record the known C1 distance, which is in the bottom corner of the image. Next, go to Analyze and Set Scale. In the Distance and Pixels box, put in your reference number. And in the Known Distance box, put in the C1 distance. The unit is millimeters per pixel. Record the newly calculated scale that will be used for the image. In this case, it is 37.3427. Now we are ready to measure the six parameters. We will first measure the ciliary body thickness. Right click over the straight line tool to switch to a segmented line. This will allow you to draw a continuous segmented line with each left click creating a new segment. First, draw a segmented line along the scleral arc, which is the intersection of the sclera and the ciliary body. Right-clicking will end the line. Hit Control b to overlay the line. Next, draw a segmented line along the ciliary body base, which should track just above this area of bright white tissue representing the border of the ciliary body base. To measure the thickness of the ciliary body, first switch to the straight line. Next, pick a point to the left and right of the midpoint of the image. At each of these points, draw a line connecting the two segmented lines. The line should be perpendicular to the tangent of the scleral arc line at that point. Hit Control b and Control m to overlay and measure the line. The ciliary body thickness measurement is taken by calculating the average of these two measurements. Avoid picking points too far to the left or right of the ciliary body as these two lines will start to converge at the ends which would lead to an underestimation of the ciliary body thickness. Next, we will measure the density of ciliary processes in a 2 mm segment of the row of ciliary processes. We will be drawing a straight line that measures 2 mm long. To do this, use the straight line tool, and as you are drawing the line along the toolbar here, you will be able to see the measurement of your line as you are drawing it. Choose a region around the center of the ciliary process row, and draw a straight line approximately parallel to the ciliary body base that measures 2 millimeters long. Count the number of ciliary processes extending from this 2 millimeter line and record this number. 
If more than half of a ciliary process is included at the end of the line, count that ciliary process. Next, move your 2 mm line to the left of center, preferably to a location where there are no overlapping ciliary processes from the previous measurement. If the line quality is poor such that there is no location to the left with well-visualized ciliary processes that would not overlap with the previously measured ones, then the new location may have overlapping ciliary processes. Repeat the count and record the new measurement. Then move the 2 mm line to the right and repeat. This parameter is measured by taking the average of the counts that you did at each of the three locations. Next, we will measure the ciliary process length. This is done by measuring the length of each individual ciliary process along the row and taking the average of all of these measurements. I typically zoom in until just four to five ciliary processes fill the screen in order to better visualize these small ciliary processes. To measure the length of a ciliary process, use the straight line tool and draw a line that extends from the ciliary body baseline down to the tip of the ciliary process. The line should extend from the midpoint of the upper border of the ciliary process to the midpoint of the lower border of the ciliary process. A straight line is drawn between the two midpoints even if the ciliary process is curved. Hit Ctrl B and Ctrl M after each measurement in order to overlay the line and measure the length of the line that you just measured. Repeat this procedure for each ciliary process in the row. Again, this parameter measurement is the calculated average of all of these measured lengths. Next, we will measure the ciliary process thickness. Around the center of the row, find five ciliary processes. Measure the thickness of each of these five ciliary processes by measuring at the widest portion of each ciliary process. The line should be perpendicular to the line of the ciliary process length that was previously drawn over the ciliary process. However, if the ciliary process length line is drawn such that perpendicularly bisecting it would not give an accurate representation of the width, for example, if the process was bent, then measure the width at an angle that you estimate would more accurately represent the true width of the ciliary process. Hit Ctrl M to measure the thickness of each ciliary process and Ctrl B to overlay the lines. The parameter measurement is the calculated average of the five ciliary process thickness measurements. We will now measure the last two parameters, ciliary process integrated density and ciliary process area. Once again, use the straight line tool to draw a line that measures two millimeters in length. Do this at approximately the center of the row of ciliary processes. Next, go to the toolbar and select the polygon option and draw a polygon that encompasses all of the ciliary processes under this two millimeter line using the line as one edge of the polygon. Once the polygon is drawn, hit Ctrl B and Ctrl M to overlay and measure. On your measurements pop-up window, you will see the calculation for both the integrated density, shown here, as well as the area, shown here, of the polygon that you just measured. 